Evening, Stav here again. Uh, video today is a bit of turbo tech because I got some turbos got for sale and they're pretty cool. And to be honest, it's something probably a lot of you haven't seen before and this is a really good way of showing you. So while this might seem like a bit of an advert, if you want to know properly how variable geometry turbos work, I can show you now because I've got this one here. What this is, is a, well, you can see it just there. It's an IHI, Japanese turbo brand, which did like Formula One turbos and Le Mans turbos. And IHI are probably one of the best, if not the best turbo brand in the world, really. But anyway, this is an RHF 55V. You might recognize that name kind of because the RHF 55 is in its various forms um, the OEM turbo on a lot of uh, STI Subarus and stuff but this the V stands for variable geometry so this is basically the same compressor and turbine wheels pretty much as the STI ones so it can flow a lot of air and make quite a lot of power. High 300s I think they can make on a petrol engine. And obviously a diesel not quite as much but still a good number. They're bigger than like um, something like a GT28 RS. They're similar, maybe slightly bigger than one of them. This is a 65mm compressor wheel. It's a 47mm inducer. Um, this one, unlike the Subaru ones, it's got a anti-surge inlet because the variable geometry means the thing can spool up so bloody fast it would have compressor surge quite possibly if it didn't have the anti-surge inlet so that's cool and also anti-surge makes it spool up really loud so everyone loves that but yeah compressor side you know it's quite big that's bigger than uh, a GT28 compressor housing I would say that's more like a GT30 compressor housing in physical size and the wheel is bigger than the GT28 RS one but not by much 5 mil uh, I'll show you it with the uh, compressor rising off not like it is anything different but I might as well show you right this is it with the uh, compounds removed it's basically a typical IHI RHF 55 nice compressor wheel design I mean, it's, these turbos are practically new. They're used, definitely. But as you can see, they're pretty mint. The weird thing with IHIs is they use a bit of red sealant to seal the compressor housing. It looks... Usually red sealant on things, you think, oh, fucking hell, it's a bodge. But that is uh, how they do it on the OEM application. And that's not a bad thing, because it's surprising the amount of standard turbos that this leaks around this join. Whole sets don't do it often but I've seen Garrett's do it quite a lot because they've just got a push fit and that's it. My friend's uh, brand new GTX 28 Gen 2 when it was on the dyno we pressure tested it and it was pissing out of there and we actually did just add a bit of uh, red sealant and fixed it but IHIs come with it as standard. Some car, some turbos come with like a rubber o-ring or whatever or nothing is the most common one but yeah they just use a bit of sealant which is what you see there but yeah 47 mil inducer 65x juicer 7 blade on the 7 plus 7 if you're counting the uh, the secondary blades but yeah just compressor wheel this is a compressor rising again conventional you see the anti-surge slots there but the interesting bit is the other side. This is the controller to it. That controls the VGT, much like a internal wastegate flap. But I'll uh, flip it over now and show you that. Right, this is the turbo side on the RHF 55V. Quite big turbonizing, which is common on uh, VGT turbos because you can go really big on housing because the VGT itself, when closed, you know, basically acts it, makes it out like a small housing. Uh, the inlet there is a square one, much like uh, a lot of Toyota inlet flanges and um, 
Wow, um, a lot of greddy ones and all sorts of these uh, four bolt round inlets. But I've removed these eight bolts, which are there. And this takes the back bit off. And normally with VNT turbos, it's hard to sort of uh, see the mechanism. But the way these IHI ones are designed, as well as being really sturdy, they're easy to uh, look at. So let's have a look. Right then, this is with the back housing off. That there is simply the what's on the inside of what would normally be a wastegate arm. If it was, you know, conventional wastegated design, that's just the arm like you've probably seen a million times before. But on this, it moves the sort of, I don't know what you want to call it, but the internal arm, which in turn moves the VNT mechanism, which I'll show you in a minute. It's also got these limiter screws, which is quite good. Basically, it limits the maximum closed and open on here. If you was really tweaking this, if you wanted to, you can uh, loosen the limiters and make it move less or move a little more if you wanted. So, you know, depends, but generally, this would be set up good enough for almost anything. But yeah, that's the IHO turbo wheel. Again, practically fucking new. Absolutely normal. As you can imagine, that is a really big housing. You know, if it was AR, that'd be like AR shitloads. Because the VNT means you can do this. If you don't really know, what VNT does, it kind of makes a turbo, well, at the turbine side of the turbo, at like a big one so high flow when it's fully open but like a small one so very fast fall when it's closed so open it lets this whole housing do its job closed it kind of i don't know how to explain it there's no real math to it but it makes it act like a much much smaller one like less than half they say like um usually about a third of the size is at what it sort of behaves as in like whole set terms they often say um it'd be like 24 centimeter fully open but four centimeter fully closed and sometimes up to about eight or ten fully closed but open would be over double that sometimes three times that so yeah you wonder why these uh diesels spool up for nothing but make fairly good power it's a good old VNT, and that is this bit, which I'll show you now. Um, what we got, this is the VNT ring. That there is what that controls. It just moves that left and right a little bit. But here's a clever bit, and I'm hoping you can see it on camera. Can you see, here we go, that is fully open and it's got these moving veins fucking very clever design so fully open and then fully closed open closed so closed it increases spool up open increases power and yeah that's controlled by an actuator on these cars as standard, or these turbos as standard, it's got this 24 volt electronic actuator. So, standard normal actuator arm, but, but a 24 volt electronic thing, which would be a bugger to use as an aftermarket thing. But it doesn't matter because 99% of these things that we're used to have normal vacuum or pressure actuators and it works the same you just decide work out with your setup what boost you want it to open at so a standard it'll be closed and then at say 10 psi it opens and obviously with actuators the opening and closing is gradual anyway you know it doesn't go close open at a certain boost it nearly always creeps open and you can change that with a boost controller as well to sort of um adjust the speed it opens but what you often find with vnt or any of these variable geometry type things is 
you do a bit of testing and realize there's a certain level where it doesn't matter if it's fully open the spool's the same so like say at 7 psi it was fully closed but then even if you fully opened it at 8 psi the spool stays the same so there's usually a certain level which you'll find with tweaking and testing different boost levels where you can just open the thing and it still spools up you know instantly i've had it on cars where that level's as low as like 5 psi so as long as you've got it close to 5 psi you can just open it after that and the boost still rockets up but that's going to vary on cars i've never seen it more than about 15 but um yeah i've seen it as low as five so uh it's just a bit of playing there's nothing to be scared about with these uh things you just it's testing it's real simple and yeah this is what it looks like from the outside a good bit of, of a view so you got open closed open closed and what you find as well is the way it's designed is supposedly you see it's like guide vanes so they're angled that way which supposedly helps like swirl so it swirls in the direction of the turbine wheel which in turn speeds the bloody thing up so yeah look, open closed open closed power spool power spool or somewhere in between so yeah dead clever bit of kit this is why everyone uses these on diesels and the best thing about this one which is i mean this one's going to a guy who's going to buy it off me tomorrow funnily enough so i thought i'd take the pictures and video before i uh give it him but these are kind of middle size vnt taros most vnt taros are either little so they're like you know 250 brake tops sort of things or they're big fuckers that are good for like 500 plus brake. There's none of the sort of middle ground ones. And this is a very good middle ground one. It's sort of uh, bigger than a GT28, smaller than a GT30. And uh, that's pretty rare in VNT turbos. They're normally, there's not many middle ground ones like this. But I've got maybe four of these left, five of these left. And I'm not asking much money, like 250 quid each. So, yeah, you can see why people want them. But, yeah, they're badass. They're almost new, but they're clearly slightly used. But the fact that VNT moves that freely is a testament to how good condition they are. But, yeah, I just thought I'd show you guys how a VNT turbo works. And, um, yeah, they're pretty badass. This is the brackets, the actuator brackets for the electronic jobby. But you can reuse that with a normal pressure actuator. Easy. But yeah, that's enough of that. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.